Netflix is rapidly solidifying itself as a dominant force in awesome new animated shows, and with the brand new series from the writers of Avatar The Last Airbender called The Dragon Prince, we've never been more excited to see what they do next. Here to tell me more is the showrunner of The Dragon Prince, Aaron Ehaz, along with Justin Richmond. Uh, you guys are both the creators of this sort of yes. multimedia franchise, is that right? Is, <laughs> yes. that, is, that, is that accurate? Yes, that's accurate. Because you've got a Netflix series. We use the term co-creators. Co-creators, that's, that's, really, that's good. Because uh, you have your Netflix animated series, but then there's also a game that you're working on. And yes, that's we right. Are, we are working on a game. We're not ready to talk about it yet, but okay. yes, there's going to be a game set in the same universe as Dragon Prince. Well, so first tell us about the premise of the Dragon Prince. I know there's two princes, and there's an elf assassin. Is that right? There is. Okay. I think it's it's one of those things where you want to share the premise without spoilers. So yeah. it's an epic fantasy world where um, there's been some tension over some... Uh, unsavory uses of magic over the past few centuries and that tension has come to a boil with um, the the killing of can I say this yes yeah, the ahead. killing of the dragon king and the destruction of his only egg his heir the dragon prince and this has incited a war between the magical lands and the human kingdoms and that's where we join our characters is at the at the brink of this catastrophic mm. war well but there are two princes though there are two yes. princes do we know which one is the dragon prince do they know or is that How do you know either of them is the Dragon Prince? That's, that's oh. what I don't, I'm wondering. Um, it's something that... Uh, spoiler territory, I guess. Gotcha, yeah. Bad. We want to yeah. avoid spoilers, of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then who, who is the, uh, the assassin that is sent to kill them? But I think they end up sort of teaming up. Yeah, she's a bit of a mysterious figure. Yeah. Her name is uh, Rayla, and she's this a super awesome moon shadow elf with unusual skills and... Uh, abilities and uh, being sent on this this mission is testing her, is testing her sense of right and wrong. So one of the things she tells herself is that an assassin does not decide right or wrong, only life and death. Hmm. And that's the kind of yeah. quandary she faces as she, she jumps into the story. Yeah. Well, so Aaron, you're, you, you know, you, we know your work from uh, Avatar and Futurama. And then Justin, you come from video games. Yes. Uh, Uncharted. Yes. And others. So how did you end up working together on The Dragon Prince? <laughs> we, yeah. we, we, you could tell how we met. Yeah. All right. So we, we both worked at Riot Games together. So okay. Aaron was a creative director at Riot Games. Okay. I was a producer working in R&D, and we sort of sat near each other and ended up like bonding over coffee and yeah. comics and nerd stuff. And uh, and then at some point decided, like, hey, we should do something together and, yeah. uh, and kind of left and did our own thing. We started with me cor being part of the yes. team, courting him to get him to come to Riot. <laughs> That's right. And then we, we got to Riot together and really bonded creatively over a number of things. Yeah. And then uh, we, we got close and had a, had a vision to do something uh, on our own and with our third partner, Justin Santa Stephen. Yeah. And yeah. so we started Wonderstorm and um, started telling the story of the Dragon Prince and so building this world. Riot, uh, were you guys working on League of Legends? Or? We were working on league and also and kind stuff. of future and unnamed yeah. projects yes. yeah. very interesting then what was sort of the idea the impetus of the idea behind the dragon prince where that come from i think aaron aaron came to had an idea for a pitch that was similar but slightly different and a bunch of that got sort of carried forward into what became hmm. the dragon prince we sort of started talking about it um I don't know, a couple of years ago, basically. Sorry, yeah. I mean, the initial thing came from talking about like magic systems and this idea of yeah. like, uh, okay, well, what if there are all these kinds of magic that are kind of ancient and arcane and difficult and you need to know kind of all the, this ancient spell stuff yeah. to do this kind of magic, but someone figures out there's a quick way to do magic and that's mm. dark magic. And that's that you, you find a creature that has that magic as part of their essence and you consume it fat, quickly and... and, and and it unleashes a great amount of magic quickly. So this idea of dark magic being kind of a shortcut yeah. to great fast power and what kind of impact that would have in a world populated with magical creatures, many of whom are intelligent in addition to being powerful. Yeah. And that's that was kind of the the start. Part, yeah. And then we started trying to figure out who the characters were and, and, and what some of the deeper histories were of the world yeah. and that sort of thing. But it started with talking about magic. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Uh, so, like, what's, what would you say the vibe of the show is? Is it straight up fantasy? Is it uh, fantasy? Is there, are there just, comedic yeah, it's elements? Epic fantasy, but it's epic. funny. I mean, it's okay. it's it's in the you know in the realm of Avatar: The Last Airbender, okay. right? It's yeah. it's, uh, it's funny, but there's great action. There's great heroic moments, but it's also 
uh, there's real there's real drama, right? Like the characters are hopefully feel real to people and have real problems that they're yeah. sort of facing and stuff like that. So we're not afraid to go to darker places, but it's also hopefully funny and delightful also. Will Avatar fans uh, recognize any of that show's like DNA or tone we, or style here? Yeah, we, we certainly hope so. Um, you talk about DNA, a lot of the creative leadership yeah. on this show did come from Avatar. I did, uh, our third showrunner, uh, Giancarlo Volpe, was one of the amazing directors on Avatar, and he's executive producer on this. And uh, uh, our executive at Netflix, Jenna Boyd, was yeah. uh, uh, the executive on Avatar. So th there's a lot of, Jack DeSena is playing Callum. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're inspired by Avatar. We're also really inspired by the Avatar audience, which is to say, this audience that connected to the characters on the show yeah. in a really meaningful way, and it's so rewarding to have the experience as a creator putting that out there that, um, yeah, we're absolutely hoping to create those kinds of connections with, mm -hmm. with this audience. Yeah. Has it been very different working with Netflix or making a show for Netflix? Interestingly, I think Netflix of 2018 has some similarities to what I think was happening or what I felt happening at Nickelodeon hmm. back over 10 years ago, which is there is a spirit of um, originality and kind of creator-driven um, support where they, they just want to help you realize an amazing creative vision. And uh, so it's, it's, it's been great working yeah, with them. Yeah, great partners. Do you have any additional freedom there? Are you able to get away with more? Just since you're not on television? Get away with is not the way of right. putting okay. it. Yeah. Okay. They are, they are they, we were talking earlier, the, they have we're actually the same standards and practices person, George Lentino, who worked on Avatar, Interesting. helping us with this. And the goal is to, it's not to get away with something, yeah. but to figure out how do you tell a story in a nuanced way that allows you to explore the real depths of, of what could be happening, including big things like like um, death and treachery and, and, and big things that are happening. Um, and so, yeah, we've had a lot of help doing that. We, we think we're telling a story that's that's epic and dimensional and and we're getting away with everything, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. Uh, in your in your fantasy world, are you dealing with uh, sort of like familiar fantasy characters like elves, uh, orcs, goblins, dragons, that sort of thing? Or are you sort of trying to invent your own creatures? It's a, it's a little of both. I mean, yeah. so we do have elves, right? We've already talked about, although I think our elves, people will discover they're a little different than what I think people, what we've seen before. There's some, we have a very different system for how our elves kind of work. So I think people will discover that as we go forward. Um, we have tons and tons of magical creatures that are sort of non-standard, I think, or, or different from what's been out there. So I, there's a bunch of tried and true yeah. awesome fantasy stuff in there, but yeah, we're trying to put our own twist on it for sure. Well, it's also really interesting that you're sort of developing this video game alongside the show as well. Yeah. Uh, is there anything you can tell us about what that video game is going to be like? Unfortunately, or like? not yet, but okay. what I will say is that the core premise of our whole company, Wonderstorm, is basically having the, the creatives on both sides sitting literally next to each other. So our game designers sit on, on writing meetings yeah. and our writers sit next to the game designers and help them with like context and how moves should work and all that kind of stuff. So it's very much like an organic process. So hopefully at the end of the day, both pieces will feel totally organic, but from the same universe. Uh, well, the Dragon Prince sounds very cool. Uh, it arrives on Netflix on September 14th. Yes, that's it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming by our little thank balcony, you. our little yes. corner of Comic-Con. <laughs> thank you here. for having us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. Much more to come on IGN Live from Comic-Con right after the break.